You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block That music means we are back after a bit of a hiatus for the Memorial Day holiday here in the U.S. The Option Block All-Star Crew is back for your usually bi-weekly, this week only one dose of options fun. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E OptionsInsider.com, as well as from the network upon which all of you folks have been catching up this past week. Coming back live today, of course, we've been... Live to tape hitting the network throughout the rest of the week, including just an embarrassment of riches hitting the network from the OIC conference down there. So hopefully you're enjoying that. See, we don't leave you high and dry. Even when the markets are closed, you have new content coming to you guys, courtesy of us. That's how much we like you folks out there, including a little hit from some guy called the Flowmaster doing his annual state of the industry. If you listen to nothing else, from OIC. And I, hey, I like some of my interviews I had down there as well. I thought they were pretty fun. I'm kind of partial to those myself. But if you listen to nothing else from our OIC content, you should check out uh, the Flowmaster's little spiel there. It's kind of interesting. A lot of data, a lot of number crunching. He does have a presentation floating around out there. We'll see if we can get our hands on it as well. Maybe we could, we could tweet it out as an accompaniment. But if you listen to it, it will certainly uh, give you some insight into how the options market is shaping up here in 2024 and of course if you want more insight beyond just what we do here on the network including options oddities let's say tomorrow after vol views of course if you already wanted to be listening to a lot of the great oic stuff a whole bunch of it is already up there and more to come over there at the optionsinsider.com slash pro 
the place to go. Of course, great giveaways. Man, we're already coming up on the May crate. You folks are just cleaning me out. I'm just kidding. We have more in the vault <laughs> to come. So if you want to get your hands on another pro trading crate, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. The place to go. Get in there soon because uh, May, May counting down here, listeners. The, the May crate coming soon. As we see who's joining us on the old program today. I mentioned him earlier, so let's start in Cebo East. Mr. Flowmaster, welcome back to the show. Have you had a chance to go back and check out your presentation that just hit the network this week, sir? Uh, I haven't, but I, I did notice that you posted it, so I appreciate that. And um, I'm, actually, I'm going to update the volume through the end of the, this month tomorrow. So um, I'll give you, I can give you a PDF that could be the, the video or the visual to go with the audio. Um, but um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. It's a beautiful day in New York. Uh, some interesting things going on that we can talk about uh, in the, in, uh, in the coming minutes. Should be fun. Stay tuned for us. Maybe on, on the socials listeners, we'll tweet out that. That link. So if you're listening to Henry, you should be listening to that. Then by all means, you'll have some visual. It's a very visual heavy presentation. As we keep going around the horn to the man who spent his Memorial Day weekend busy battling the dam pirate, not the clam pirates. Those are on the shores of Maine, but on the shores of the Fox River, they have the dam pirates. And Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management led the charge against them over the Memorial Day weekend. Mr. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the show. Glad you made it back safe and sound, sir. Hey, those guys are no joke. Supposedly, uh, somebody there's a dock that a public dock right in front of the dam. Supposedly, some activists from the dam pirates, the people who are trying to get rid of the dam, untied a boat, let the boat go over the dam as a way of trying to demonstrate their protest for the dam. So those dam pirates here Jeez. are no joke. We got to get rid of them. Indeed, and I heard the boat was full of children and nuns and orphans. So I mean, my God, they were just merciless and cruel. Those, those I don't know about that part, but the first part of it, the boat did go over the dam, and that's never happened before all this dam controversy happened. The second part, just rumors and hearsay. We don't know about the second part, but we can we can attest to the first part. As we keep on rolling down to the land once known as the Southern Volatility Mecca, now probably just known as pretty freaking hot, it is Austin. We are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show, sir. Good to be here. Yeah, it's only 92 degrees today. Oh, Not balmy. too bad. The balmy night. Uh, so it's a dry heat. Beautiful, little little overcast here today, <laughs> but uh, can't can't complain about the weather yet. And yet, give it another week or so, and it'll be fun time. As is time, listeners, for a little bit of the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, listeners, let's get to it. Time to dive into what the heck is trading. How is the second half of this truncated holiday trading week unfolding out here? Well, if you like a little bit of blood red across the spectrum of the market, then today is your day, listeners, the day you have been waiting for. A little bit of a pullback out there. How much depends on where you're looking, as usual, of course. Salesforce seeming uh, to screw the pooch out there and spook a lot of people. How dare a major company post bad earnings? That's just not allowed <laughs> this economy. So uh, the market getting spooked coming into today. For a while, the, the indices were a little more blood red than they are right now. The Dow right now off about two thirds of a percent. Dow wearing it the most out there today. It has, I think it was off about a full percent earlier in the session. S&P off about 0.15%. I believe that was down pretty much close to half a percent earlier today as well. And the NASDAQ down about a third of a percent right now. So all of them still red, but off of their lows for the day. Uh, if you want something that's bucking the trend as it is wont to do, you know, small caps kind of march to the beat of their own drum. That's what they do. And today the small caps are like everybody else is off maybe a percent or a little bit less. We're going to be up 1.3% because why not? The day that ends in Y, small caps going to do what small caps are going to do out there all that a long way around bake that all in to the vix calculation which pulls us in at a 13 and three quarters as we kicked off the show notably higher than we were this time a week ago in fact exactly two points higher so getting a little bit frothier out there all of you who wanted us to buy all those july 11 puts out there in vix land not a good week for those 
but uh, got some time. Got some time on those. I don't. I, good thing I didn't buy any. I think the Rock Lobster bought some. I did not. So you folks can't twist our arms into all of your crazy VIX put trades. Most of them, but not all of them. Uh, VVIX, as we kicked off the show, at about an 80, putting it unched on the week. All right, a lot to unpack. Uh, let's go out to the land of the Flowmaster. Again, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what's catching your eye out there in an intriguing second half of the truncated holiday week, sir? Yeah, you know, I, I've started some of my table updating, and I was just running average daily volume for May is is not it's not what I like to see. It's It's barely 43 million contracts a day. And my my first slide is always um, the expected total annual volume, and I, I keep saying we're going to be over 12 billion contracts. Um, it's we're kind of right on the right on the border now, so you know things certainly might pick up into election year, and we see that there's already a VIX futures uh, spike in that uh, in that end of the year term. So things things are expected to get more more active, but but May's been kind of a quiet one. Uh, you know, I mean this market. I think when we talked last week, uh, I think we were having a pretty sharp down day, actually, meaning you know we're down more than a percent, uh, and you know it was kind of there was some some hand wringing. You know, the market's just kind of been sideways. There's you know there's there's more uh, there's more numbers coming out, and yeah, some of these earnings are a little bit exciting. Um, I was looking at, at Max and Solar is down almost fifty was down almost fifty percent uh, this morning, but. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's I don't know, kind of I think we're just kind of you know trading in a range. You know, VIX is around thirty, almost fourteen, which is certainly up from twelve. But uh, like I looked at the zero day straddle in uh, SPX this morning, it's around twenty dollars. Uh, so it's it's higher than it's been, right? We we had some days where it was down in the you know fourteen dollar range. Um, but speaking of SPX, did you see the headline on um, the the SPX index itself froze for an hour today? Uh, yeah, I was about to ask what you did, what you did, uh, Henry, to break SPX for Did you hit the SPX off button again by accident, Henry? <laughs> it, you know, well, what's funny is a friend of mine has been buying some premium and not making any money, right? Because realize Vol really has, has been pretty, pretty low. And he sent me a text last week, said, how low can Vol go? And I'm like, well, clearly it can go to zero if the, if the index is just going to lock in place for an hour. Uh, so I had nothing to do with it. Uh, and I'm, I, I know for a fact there was an incredible scramble um, by all the participants to, to figure out what was going on. I, I think it, it originated upstream at, at S&P, I believe. And there's, it's in the journal and hit the news. But uh, this kind of a big – it really is a big deal because one of the things I remember vividly is at the last risk conference, somebody from S&P – uh, noted that that he believes there's 30 trillion dollars indexed globally to the S&P 500, and that's a lot of money. And um, you know, when you have something like this happen, it does kind of make everybody scratch their head. Now, in the end, you know, because of the way that that index options work, the futures were still open. The futures were were perfectly liquid, and therefore the options were perfectly liquid too. It didn't it didn't really bother anybody. However, when you do have zero day options, people are paying a lot more attention to the to the cash. Right. Um, yes. So all of a sudden, I think there was a lot of like, wait, what's going on here? And I, I bet you will hear some stories because basically there was a frozen number for a while. And even though the futures were you know, traded up from there, um, you, you could have some people that got pretty confused by the put call parity compared to the cash, which was not accurate. Told you, Mr. Flowmaster, you should have disabled that SPX freeze button. Way too dangerous. <laughs> and, and you don't listen to me, and this is kind of what happens out there, listeners. So, listeners, were you uh, impacted by that today? Did it freak you out coming in, seeing uh, your S cash just, just frozen? <laughs> were you equally surprised to see that uh, the options were still viable and trading out there? Uh, intriguing stuff in the markets that we all live in today. Mr. Meatball, sounds like that one certainly threw you for a loop out there. What were your thoughts on uh, Henry once again hitting that button we told him not to hit? And then what else is catching your eye on a day when Salesforce spook in the market and we're all trying to come back from a, a long holiday weekend and we got a lot of blood red in the markets? Yeah, to Henry's point, um, with zero DTE being, what, 50% of the volume, that relies a lot more on where where the cash index is going um, than the futures. And yes, I know that they're they're tied up, but you're paying a little bit more attention to the cash. And so uh, it definitely impedes some of the zero DTE. I would not be surprised to see volumes come up a little bit light on that. Um, and obviously, um, 
that was going to affect the VIX. Now the VIX is still running off of S and P option prices, but part of that is related to where is the S and P trading and what's at the money and what isn't. So that threw off VIX for a little bit as well. Um, now VIX continued to quote, but it didn't quote accurate exactly accurately because S and P, you know, it, it wasn't properly determining, you know, kind of what was at the money. I believe it's because you know there was some funkiness there, but. Good news, as Henry said, futures are still trading and we're still trading in liquid. You could still trade anything you want to do. It didn't really impede that, but it definitely confused some retail traders that I was talking to when I said, when I explained that uh, the quotes were frozen. I noticed before the 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 press release hit, I actually noticed all, almost right away, right? If the S&P stays in the same place for more than 15 seconds, something is wrong. Uh, now, on on kind of the wider note, it's it's been interesting. Um, you know, today's kind of a weird mixed day. The Russell is up, the S and P is kind of in the middle, and the Nasdaq and the Dow are down. Uh, CRM, ouch! That is really putting a hurting on the overall market. Uh, CRM is down twenty percent. They're really punishing misses. This this I don't know if you've noticed this, Mark and Mike and and Henry, but. I feel like missing on earnings is getting punished way harder than uh, than it used to. It does be. seem like they are taking you out to the woodshed a lot, a lot more aggressively these days. Yes. Yeah. And um, other big losers, Dollar General, and then on the winning side, Hewlett Packard up eighteen percent right now. Hewlett Packard, HPQ. Interesting look. You know, the only thing I said is, you know, take a look at the return on Dell. Um, in the last two years and, uh, and really the last year, and then look at HPQ. If you think HPQ can get it partially into that business, then it becomes an interesting buy and 38 up 20% seems high now, but uh, year over year, or excuse me, two years over two years, HP is actually, st- is actually flat. So if you bought something two years ago in HP, you are finally back uh, to break even. Who needs NVIDIA when you got HP, sir? I mean, you got uh, the money printing machine. <laughs> that is HP. <laughs> yes, everything old is new again and apparently can still shock the market sometime out there. Listen, have you been trading around this whole uh, CRM bloodbath? Were you surprised by the SPX cash freezing <laughs> out there? Uh, all kinds of fun out there as we keep rolling out to the land of the Fox River, Mr. Uncle Mike, sir. A lot going on. Your beloved S&P momentarily frozen today. I know your other beloved sales force taking it on the chin. What's catching your eye out there today, sir? Well, I mean, a couple things. Uh, in addition to the S&P and what uh, Mark and the Flowmaster had talked about, um, we are starting to get some sellers in silver. Uh, we had a big day two days ago, and then it was it came back up to the uh, 10-year highs or the 12-year highs or whatever it is. And so we are getting a little bit of a sell-off on it today, down 1.75%. And um, I think 30 is, gonna, is the next big hurdle right now with SLV in the uh, – the run upward, if and when that does happen, uh, we we did have we've it, it really is starting to feel a lot like it did ten years ago, and all I ever talked about on the show was silver and Apple, and um, uh, we'll see if it can continue to go. But uh, I'll become more of a believer in it when we can just get past that thirty mark in SLV. Uh, so that's definitely catching my eye today. Uh, we're having some buyers in the bond world. Uh, with some yields coming down a little bit uh, in the 10 year land, uh, as well as um, in the corporate world. And so, uh, one thing that I think we just need to continue to keep an eye on, just because of the fact that we have the um, uh, we have inflation is such a big thing for us, is that we still do have, and we still need to be very well aware of it, is the inverted yield curve. And that with a 10-year yield at roughly 4.6%, a little bit lower today, um, we have the one-month yield at 5.5%. And whenever you're in an environment like that, it's something to where you have to keep note of that and you have to keep watching it. And uh, is looking at bond yields really something that I got into this business to do? No, but it's something that I think has become very important. Uh, for where we are right now. And uh, the fact that you can 
put something in for one to three months and get a percentage higher than the 10 year, uh, that's something that you need to really work with. Now, obviously, you're only locked into that higher percentage for one to three months, whereas the 10 year you're locked in for, well, 10 years. So um, there's good and bad to both of it. But uh, we really need to keep an eye on that um, going forward or until it becomes uh, non-inverted, if you will. Uh, some individual names that are catching my eye today. Uh, Apple is still holding above the 190 level. So um, it's it's staying up there, but I do think 200 staring it in the face is something that is going to be a big barrier for it. 200, three trillion dollars, whatever barrier you want, you have that. But Apple just keeps on going at it. Um, I know you'd mentioned earnings uh, with the earnings announcement with Apple saying things weren't as great as they thought they were. But the CEO, uh, we are rebuying a bunch of stock uh, that pushed it up and uh, it hasn't come down yet from that push up, if you will. So definitely keeping an eye on that. Uh, JP Morgan's another thing, another one that's standing out to me around the 200 level. Uh, we have that. And um, that is what's catching my eye today. All right. If you like a little bit of silver and 10 year note, stay tuned. Uncle Mike going to be joining me a little bit later today to discuss all that stuff and probably a whole bunch more, including his beloved crypto coming up on This Week in Futures Options in about exactly an hour, Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike, you ready to talk some BTC in about an hour, sir? Oh, what else is there? I mean, it's um, it's the highlight of my of my year is talking about Bitcoin. I mean, you're actually you really want to get into the micro ether. I know you. I know you. So we'll save all that fun for an hour. Save your voice. Rest up, Mr. Uncle Mike. We'll come back to that. In a little bit as I go around the horn now, see what's lighting up these markets. And again, it's kind of a pick your poison kind of day out there. Let's start in Vixland as we are wont to do. We were talking earlier about uh, some freezes out there that seems to be weighing on some of the volume out there, including in our old friend, Mr. Vix. Uh, Mr. Vix looking like we're heading into not coming out of uh, a holiday weekend out there. Not a heck of a lot of paper on the tape. 261,000 as of a few minutes. Looks like they just put up a few more. 283,000 right now. So we're a little bit north of a quarter of a million contracts, but not a heck of a lot of paper right now. A pretty sleepy start to the day, volume-wise at least, for VIX. Uh, the ADV still looking pretty firm at about 816. That's up roughly 10,000 from where it was this time a week ago. Listeners, let's go out to SPY. SPY at 4.2 million. So SPY continuing to put up the numbers in spite of the fact that uh, things were freezing up out there today. Uh, the ADV, 6.9 million. Uh, the S, we were just talking about this, this one freezing up. Did that impact the numbers out there a little bit today? Folks just spooked. What the hell's going on? Obviously, you could still trade out there, but maybe for those of you, the lens of the S is the cash, maybe a little bit flummoxed by that. Uh, closing in on 1.5 million contracts, 1.47 million. So a little bit below where we would expect this time of day. But nothing terrible. It's not like it's at 75,000 contracts or anything like that. Uh, the ADV, 2.76 million out there. So holding firm, even if it is back below uh, 3 million contracts out there. Small caps, IWM, 629,000 contracts on the tape right now. So IWM rallying hard, not really delivering the volume, but it is still north of halfway to its ADV. Its ADV is 1.08 million. So they are looking on pace to hit that out there today. What is looking a little light from its pace, at least, is the Qs, 1.95 million right now. We usually expect the Qs to be around two and a quarter million this time of the show. Again, they're more than halfway to their ADV, so they're probably going to hit it. The Qs are a weird beast. They always kind of front load their volume. They do the lion's share of it in the morning, as witnessed by the fact that they're usually around two and a quarter million. Then they tend to drift the rest of the day, the last roughly three quarters of a million contracts <laughs> kind of a quiet second half of the session usually maybe that'll be the case again today either way uh, the adv about 2.98 million so they got about exactly a million contracts to go to hit that out there today but let's get out into the single name land to see what's lighting it up that's what you folks want to know is it a rock'em sock'em day on the single name front again kind of depends it cost you 229,000 to break in the, the flow master he will like this number 10 name. This is his favorite. Uh, this is our old friend back this time in the top 10. It is Faraday Future Intelligent Electric Inc. <laughs> Say all that five times. I just love that title. It's like they just threw every word they could think of just into the title. Little title Mad Libs. And they came up with this. FFIE, of course. 
Uh, this thing, you know the roller coaster. Flowmaster was talking about, I think it was exactly two weeks ago on the show when we all kind of collectively discovered this name. Went from about a nickel all the way up to, I think it was $4 and change. <laughs> and then right back down again. It's 53 cents again right now. So I think the question got down to earlier this week, listeners, 37 cents just, just yesterday. So Mr. Flowmaster, the folks out there all want to know, uh, since we all discovered it, have you put a little FFIE in your back pocket, sir? Uh, I have not, but yeah, we did watch that thing. Uh, and, you know, it, it's interesting. I was I was paying attention to some of the, the press coverage of the, this latest little meme wave, right, which was maybe kicked off by the, the Roaring Kitty tweet. But, um, you know, and, and one thing that, that they were talking about is the cycle is just very, very quick. So, you know, things move, but they may only move for an hour or a day. Uh, and, you know, this certainly seems like one of those. Didn't it didn't it top it top three dollars? Right. It hit, briefly it hit four something recently i do believe let me see yeah i think so i think you're right I'm trying to hit the i'm trying to find the exact top i can't find it now but yeah it, it's it's had quite the rampage even since uh, we last talked about it out there listeners and today doing a whopping 200 so even with the stock at 50 cents listeners some folks some folks still want to sling the options uh you know me i'm curious listen i have to see i have to see what the folks are up to i'm going to guess it's the one calls maybe next month uh, no, I was right on the strike, wrong on when they're going out. They're going out tomorrow, listeners. 43,000 of the May 1 calls expiring tomorrow going up today against 40,000 of the half puts also going out tomorrow. So it's a zero-day palooza. If that's not enough, you've got the half calls. So those are at the money. One calls, I mean, you got to, again, this is a nonsense name. It could do anything, but... These were trading all the way up to 13 cents, looks like, this morning. So 13 cents for the one calls expiring tomorrow versus the stock itself was 37 cents yesterday. <laughs> I don't know which one of those I'd rather do. But yeah, wow. It's just, it's, uh, it defies description. It defies logic. I suppose that's what makes it interesting for a lot of you out there. Let's go out to number nine. It's Hood, 261,000 contracts. 22 even today, up about 92 cents today. So a decent day for Hood. They're buying, they're pulling the Apple trick. Apparently they're buying a billion worth of stock. Well, not quite the 100 billion that Apple is buying. But they decided with their stock at near-term highs to buy some back as well. <laughs> Intriguing timing on all these buybacks. They're like, hey, you know, it looks good for Apple. Stock's up. We'll do it too. Robinhood, 261,000. If you want to hear what the folks at Robinhood are up to on the options front, Check out the chat I had with uh, those folks down at OIC. Hit the network last week, I believe. You can find it over there. Fun stuff. Number eight, listeners. We got the Amazonians. 180 and about a quarter. Off nearly two bucks or about 1%. Seems like Salesforce is dragging down all of these names out there today. Even though, obviously, Amazon, not quite the same. But they do, they do overlap in a couple of regards out there. Uh, number eight, 277,000 off 1% today. Number seven, good old softy. 419 and a half off nearly 10 bucks, nine and two thirds, about two and a quarter percent. So taking a little bit of a bloom off of the very lofty rose that is softy today, 296,000 contracts and the number seven spot. Number six is Palantir getting a lift today, 2188 up 93 cents, almost at the same level of Robin Hood. Might be a fun question of the week, Robin Hood or Palantir, which one would you rather have in your back pocket right now? Both trading right around 22 bucks. An intriguing question. Maybe you want to do the pairs trade. Buy one, sell the other. I don't know. I'm intrigued, listeners. Either way, Palantir number six, 200, and, excuse me, 311,000 contracts. Number five is the fruit company. We were just talking about them. Their ears must be burning. 191, 92, almost getting at the palindromic nonsense. Not quite for the meatball. I just ticked. 192 even now. So up about a buck and three quarters. <laughs> uh, so a good little day for them today after debating this buyout. Either way, the stock is up again. Good for number five, 466,000 contracts. Number four, you like A tech names. You got another one for you. It's AMD, 168.15, up three bucks pretty much exactly on the day, or 1.8%. So a good little day out there for AMD. Number four, 470,000 contracts. Number three, you knew it had to come in here somewhere today, listeners. And it landed at number three. It's Salesforce, a.k.a. CRM. 556,000 contracts on the tape. You'd be forgiven for expecting more with a day like this. It's off 57 and two thirds, trading two thir excuse me, 214 even right now. Off 21 
0.21%. So a rough day here for Salesforce. If you're any sort of tech-related or adjacent name, if they can even whisper AI around you in any capacity, and you show any inkling of weakness, they just take you to the woodshed out here these days. My goodness, what a... What a drubbing listener, 72 handles to the dark side off 25%. Man, just coming for it today, 556. Let's just look, let's just look really quickly because I am a curious cat. You know what curiosity does to the cat out there, listeners, but let's see. Let's find out anyway. What is the hot? I'm going to guess it's uh, the straight hat the money put. <laughs> and I'm, I would be wrong. It is the 230 call expiring tomorrow, nearly 50,000. This is why we crunch the numbers. Listen, nearly 50,000 of these bad boys. Looks like paper. We're selling a lot of them for prices around 72 cents. So that appears to be a good do, as they say. Looks like they sold those when the stock was 215. So $15 rally, 72 cents. That's what they're betting against out there. 75 cents for some. A buck oh eight so for some of them. So all kinds of price. Looks like a lot of sales, though. Aggressively selling calls into this sell-off, I should say. Interesting. Hopefully you got something else against that. You know, my thoughts on naked net short units out there. Either way, Salesforce listeners lighting it up to the tune of 556,000. Number two. Yes, number two. You know what it is. Maybe you love it. Maybe you hate it. It's NVIDIA. One, $1,139.31. This is going to become a mouthful to say pretty soon. Off nearly nine bucks today or almost 1%. So getting a little bit of a bump from Salesforce, but not bad. Looks like the low of the day was 11.25, so they're about 14 handles off that now. Good for 1.07 million. And the big dog out there today, listeners, still managing to trump everything else out there. It is Tesla, 1.72 million contracts. So an impressive volume day for them out there. Bit of a range out there as well. Over seven handles, 182 and two thirds to the upside, 175.38 to the downside out there, trading 178 and about three quarters right now so all stuff going on out there with uh with the pay package and all sorts of other fun out this is a day that ends in y you don't need much more than that to drive paper in tesla today it drove one and roughly three quarters million contracts out there might be saying earnings season is done and we are kind of into the into the weeds of it now but there's still some stuff popping off we had dicks this week obviously salesforce so some names can still hit you. That was yesterday as well. Hewlett Packard, the aforementioned one that the meatball was talking about also yesterday. Uh, today we have Marvell. We have Kohl's, Foot Locker, Dollar General. Meatball was talking about them as well. Best Buy surprising some folks with their number for the bell. Burlington, Costco, and Dell. So still some tech-related names out there as well. If that's what your bag is, listeners. Luckily for you folks, hot off the presses, we got some updated numbers out here. Let's go really quickly before the bell. We had Foot Locker, 22 and a half. They were pricing in 15.8%. They delivered nearly 26%. So Foot Locker outperforming aggressively to the upside. Apparently, people are buying shoes again. Who knew? Foot Locker. Who needs Tesla when you've got Foot Locker? <laughs> or who needs NVIDIA? Uh, let's see. Foot Locker now giving up some of that. It was at 28.30 when we ran this report. Now it's at 26.70. Still up about 420 or about 18.5%. Banger day for Foot Locker. My goodness. I guess folks are buying shoes, listeners. They got up to as high as about 29 and three quarters today. So nearly three bucks higher. Wow. Turnaround shows signs of life. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> uh, Burlington, who knows what they are anymore? They used to sell coats. Now, who knows what the hell they sell? Burlington, they were before the bell today as well. 200 pretty much even. They're pricing in 7.4%. Another banger here, listeners. My goodness. They delivered nearly 20%, 19.5% this morning when we ran the support. It's down to 18 and a third percent. Now they're up nearly 40 handles, about 36 and three quarters. So apparently whatever they're selling now, it's not coats. People are buying it. <laughs> My goodness, uh, Burlington, who knew? Salesforce, you don't need me to break that one down for you. They were pricing in 6.4% for you though. And spoiler alert, they outperformed that. They were at exactly 20% when we ran this, this report. <laughs> My goodness, let's go out to the land that People have been calling this one dead for about a decade now. It continues to surprise everyone. That is Best Buy. About 81 bucks right now, up about 9 bucks, or a little over 12, almost 13%. They were pricing in 5.3%, so they're outperforming over 2x their straddle right now. This is, of course, Best Buy. They're at 71.90 going into their report. They're at 80.90 right now. It's up exactly $9. So good day for Best Buy. Uh, let's go out here really quickly as well to Uncle Mike's 
favorite sector. It's the dollar store sector. Dollar General, they were pricing in 8.6%. They're at 139 and a quarter going into their announcement today. They underperformed at the time, down 2.5%. Actually, time we said they were up 2.5%. Now they have turned around the other direction. They are selling off eight and a half bucks or over six, 6.1%. So they're still underperforming their straddle. But if you look at the net movement, it has probably moved a wee bit more than that. So apparently a disappointing time in the dollar sector as well. Uh, the season, though, living up to expectation, listeners. The season... A bit of a banger out there, as the kids say. 115% right now. That is outperforming even our already lofty long-term average of 109%. So buy and vol, the order of the day. But let's see what the order of the day is in the weird trade column. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, listeners. He's had a week off to rest and charge up his unusual activity gun. Let's see what he's bringing to the table today. Is it a howitzer? Is it a 22? I guess we'll find out. Let's kick it off. What we were just talking about, this is Foot Locker, listeners. Ticker symbol FL. You know they're having a good day today. Up 410 or over 18%. On the year, it's been actually a decent year. Most of that good year driven, actually it's kind of been an unched year. And most of that unched year is driven by today's move. Take today's move out of it. Not a great year. <laughs> it was actually off. Let's see. About, looks like a little over four bucks on the year. It was trading about 26 exactly a year ago. Uh, they came for it the first time this year, back in August of last year. It got down to 1484, it looks like. So they really hammered Foot Locker. Then it was on just a glorious run from August all the way until late February. It got up to 3560. So more than doubling. In that time from August to February, people were buying shoes again. Then they fell out of bed again, back to about 22 and a half bucks on March 15th. They rallied them again, this time up to about 28 and a half bucks. So nice six buck rally over the course of about a couple of weeks. And late March, they hit that. Then they fell out of bed for a third time, back to 20 and a half bucks. That's apparently the level they like to bounce off of uh, <laughs> out there back in May before rallying again to where they are right now, 26 and a half bucks. So Mr. Flowmaster. All sorts of funky stuff going on out there. It seems like you found somebody yesterday heading into the announcement who apparently was on the wrong side of history, sir. What'd you find? Well, he was looking good for the first couple hours. So the, this actually was in the, the top couple of my trade of the day s screen. And it is it is Foot Locker. It was the, uh, the May 31st, which is tomorrow, 23 puts. So this is going into earnings. Uh, we had one of the biggest, actually the biggest trade in Foot Locker, and it was a pretty busy day in there. I think total volume was almost 40,000 contracts, which is like six times normal. And we see that heading into earnings a lot. And um, so this trade was was a sweet buyer of the 23 strike puts, uh, paying a buck 98 uh, at 11 in the morning when the stock was around 2307. It was opening. It was pretty aggressive. I think they they paid a buck 90 up to two dollars. Uh, so the average was a, do a little bit over $1.98. And they closed the day around two twenty four because the stock actually sold off a, another 50 or 60 cents after that. Uh, so they were up $87,000 on the trade. Uh, in, and then uh, before they had any, any time to monetize that, uh, we had earnings. And you know the stock, stock blew through the expectation. And these puts are now trading at a penny. So it's just, just a little bit of an interesting roller coaster. Uh, but I mean, I'll tell you, when I look at the biggest movers today, out of the top 500 single names, there are there's more than nine or 10 of them with like, you know, close to 20% moves. They're, and they're almost all earnings. Uh, so it, it is kind of, you know, and, you know, you mentioned Salesforce, is, you know, got hurt. But then you have, you know, Hewlett, like you were talking. Also, uh, C3 AI is up 20%. Uh, Wolf is up 28%, although I don't know if that one's earnings. Um, I'm not sure what the headline is there. But yeah, Foot Locker, it was a put buyer. They had a good afternoon, and then they had a 
bad today. <laughs> Add a penny. How many you want now? Never a good sign <laughs> out there. Yeah, you know, uh, sometimes you don't have the opportunity. Even if you're winning early, listeners, you, you don't have that opportunity to get out before it all just goes to hell. We've said it many times. You're buying premium going into earnings. Got to have that plan in <laughs> case a worm turns. At the very least, you know that, uh, that vol balloon is going to pop. So you got to have something in your back pocket for that. This one kind of a double whammy. Uh, Mr. Meatball, we were just talking about Foot Locker earlier on the unusual activity out there and some of the flow today. Uh, has Foot Locker been on your radar? And what do you think of our friend here apparently uh, coming on the wrong side of the history in Foot Locker earnings, sir? Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, they were looking for a kind of revisit of the March earnings, and that did not happen. Stocks, uh, you know, filled kind of filled the gap from its March earnings is pulling back, but uh, it does look pretty bullish. They're ab- absolutely de- decimating options, so pretty interesting play. Nearly two bucks for these puts with a couple of days to go. I mean, that's a uh, that's a hefty... That's a hefty scratch and sniff ticket there, listeners. <laughs> you got to really have that thing thing move pretty aggressively in your favor. Otherwise, as we've discovered, the worm can turn pretty quickly. Let's move out to another name. Let's see how this one is fearing. This is the name we haven't talked about in a while. This is Marvel Technology, ticker symbol MRVL. Uh, they're the less cool of the two Marvels out there. A trading to 77 and a third, up about one and a half bucks. I, I guess if you're along the stock, you think they're pretty cool right now. Let's see. On the year, listeners, it's been a decent year, up about exactly 22%, nearly 14 handles. A year ago, it was 63.40. Then they took it down to its low. You can probably guess when it was, right around Halloween, listeners. 46, pretty much even. And then they rocketed it up the first time. March 7th, they hit 85 bucks, pretty much even. Then they fell back down to about 62 in April. And then ever since April 19th, they've been on the rally tip back up to where they are right now, 77 and about a third. We obviously talked about them having earnings. We just talked about them on the on the earnings docket there. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, what did you spot out there in Marvell this week? Yeah, so this is um, – I was just actually was checking back a couple of days in the, the uh, earnings gap analysis as well. So it's a semiconductor maker, right? And and you know certainly the you know the AI story and and people watching Nvidia has a lot of eyes on the sector. Um, and the it has earnings tonight. You know total volume is is uh, what is it about? Uh, it's double normal, pushing around eighty thousand contracts so far. It'll probably be one hundred and twenty thousand by the end of the day. And the biggest standout trades I see are the one fifteen calls. A little bit longer data though. They're they're they expire in August. So the August 115 calls, about six thousand have traded. It's an opening buyer. They started buying them around thirty cents. It looks like they continued buying them, uh, thirty five cents, uh, thirty four cents. So um, this seems to be kind of a, a slightly longer dated long play. They're, they're not just looking for the Friday, the tomorrow calls. Uh, so maybe it's a little bit of a longer view, um, but. Um, you know, one thing that I think is kind of interesting, if you go back a couple days, that straddle was cheaper. So this is one of those issues where, and and we do, I do know some people that, that take this trade, which is they buy the straddle a couple days before earnings, not to hold into earnings, but just to kind of get a little bit of uh, free gamma, basically. The you know the, the idea being that the, that the straddle is not really going to decay because everybody's waiting for earnings. And in this case, that straddle went up about a buck. Uh, it was it was closer to like five and a half dollars two days ago. Uh, stock's pretty much in the same place, and now it's uh, now it's like six and a half dollars, actually almost almost seven bucks. I think because of these big twenty percent earnings moves that we're seeing, um, so kind of an interesting one. Um, I don't know if we'll see you know upside upside or not. I mean, you know, as as you talked about before, playing options into earnings, you know, magnitude is usually pretty close to correct. Directionally, there's I don't really think there's any any clue and in fact even the footlocker put buyer which which i agree was very aggressive it could have been somebody along the stock that was just kind of starting to sweat a little bit although it's a kind of strange it's a big chunky trade it's a big chunk but yeah jump into we, we've seen weirder things and speaking of that strategy we have talked about that before on this show in particular that kind of buying some almost free gamma heading into earnings and getting the heck out with a day or two still to go that's been a strategy we have explored before in the past as well and clearly Sounds like it worked out here in Marvel. Mr. Meatball, I know you're a fan of that strategy, at least you used to be. Uh, we haven't talked about Marvel in a while. Are you a fan of Marvel out there as well, sir? Well, you know, it's 
having a nice day. Um, been kind of stuck in a, in a, you know, they had earnings after the close today, uh, which should be interesting. Uh, they are looking for, let me see, what kind of earnings are they looking for? Looking for about an eight and a half percent move. That's more than two points above normal. Uh, that wouldn't be surprise me. This one just sm- sm- says, stay away, see what happens on earnings and go with what, what happens on earnings. Um, we, we've not seen the best of, of, of reactions to these chip names other than NVIDIA. So, you know, I'll be interested to see if, if Marvell can uh, break the trend. Goes back to your vampire NVIDIA thesis. In- NVIDIA just sucks all the juice sucks out of the, the market. life out of everything. <laughs> well, we got one more to suck the life out of. Listen, let's go out. Let's see if it's delivering. You know, this is the kind of paper perhaps that some might say the odd block was created for. It's paper in a crazy biotech where we got listeners. We've got our old friend Avantor. We've been talking about them a little bit of late. Ticker symbol AVTR uh, trading 2346 right now off about a dime or about half a percent on the year. Listeners, it was 20 and a half bucks about a year ago. So it's pretty much uh, three bucks off of that from now. So it's been a decent year up around 14 percent. Uh, they came for it in, again, around Halloween. They got down to 16 and two-thirds. That was the low for the year. Then they rallied it up to about 26 and change back in March before kind of drifting it back to where it is right now, 23 and a half bucks. Uh, Mr. Flowmaster, everybody loves some paper in a biotech. What'd you find for us today, sir? Sure. So this is not the most liquid thing. Average daily volume, 6,000 contracts. So I guess it's not terrible, but... Probably puts it down around the um, ranks in like the top 500. And just a couple um, decent directional trades. So uh, the first one is a put seller, 9,500 of the June 21 half puts sold for 12 cents. They open, you know, as you said, stocks around 23 bucks. So these are, you know, they're not that far out of the money. And then there's also some, um, some July call buyers. So the 24 calls and the 25 calls in July, uh, first up, was the 1,000 of the July 24 calls for 80 cents they paid in a sweep as those are opening. And then also the July 25s, you know, again, a buck and a half or so out of the money. Uh, so not far away. And and I think I've said this before, what we had, I did trade a little strategy um, on, on based on option flow uh, some years ago and biotechs actually performed pretty well. Uh, you know, the, there really is a community of medical professionals uh, and investors that kind of blend and um, pay very close attention to trials and upcoming catalysts. Now, I have no idea what's on the calendar for um, for this one, um, but uh, I pay attention to kind of directional flow in the biotech. So this one, actually, I think I'm, uh, I did buy a little bit of stock just to kind of you know, take a, a one or two day flyer, see if anything happens. Liar indeed. I was looking while the flow master was talking about this name. We last talked about Avantor just about a month ago. It was on the April 29th show, listeners. He talked about what looked like a size put spread, maybe a roll, uh, taking the May 23 puts and then 18,270 of those for 15 cents. Looks like paper probably buying those. Those were opening, which is weird. So if it was a roll, it was a roll backwards, which is weird. Don't see those. Actually, both legs were opening. And then 18,160 of the June, expiring on the 7th, 23 puts for about 25 cents. Worth knowing they didn't go up as a spread. They went up about an hour apart, but still uh, strange stuff. The May is now obviously off the board. Uh, the stock went out at 2418 last week, so I'll have to go look and see if those were still open. But if they were, obviously, uh, those puts a no bueno out there. Let's see. I got June 23 puts for days out here. So I'll have to dig in a little bit, listen, to see what happened. I don't see those puts open, so maybe they did take those off. Either way, though, maybe we'll come back uh, next week or come back definitely between, yeah, the 7th. That's next week, so we can talk about these next Thursday. We'll pay this off <laughs> next week and see how all this played out. But now it's time for us to play out the rest of the show. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. 
All right, let's go around the block, see what everybody's keeping an eye on. We'll start with the unclest of Mike's. We'll get his pipes <laughs> warmed up because he's going to be doing a lot of talking in a few minutes. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show? Well, I mean, I think we really need to see if we're going to um, break the 30 mark in SLV and just continuing to look at some of the individual names that I'm looking at. Uh, keeping an eye on Microsoft. Microsoft's down over 2% on the day, seeing if there's going to be any continuation with that. Um, seeing if the run for Qualcomm has had its day, so to speak, for now. And, um, of course, got to watch interest rates. Interest rates. What are those? Who watches such things? Uh, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? Uh, well, I believe um, we've got personal income, personal spending, and PCE uh, hitting us on Friday. Uh, that should be, I think, worth paying attention to. Uh, and then uh, we have a few earnings. Marvell, uh, at the aforementioned Marvell, uh, along with a few other names, are still left to report. Uh, those should be worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and uh, we've got, I'm, I'm, Andrew and I actually have a bet. Uh, he and I, I bet him a dollar that the Trump uh, verdict will have a less mm. than a one point move uh, effect on VIX. And he took the other side of that. So I'm watching that. And, uh, and, and, uh, those are the things I am watching. I thought you were going to say one point move in the SPX. I was like, that's a daring, that's a daring bet. One point in the VIX, I could probably take that, but <laughs> intriguing stuff out there. Mr. Flowmaster, last but not least, sir, what are you keeping an eye on? By the way, listeners coming into the end of the show, uh, we're pretty close to where we were to start the show. Dow off a little bit more off about 0.7%. S&P off about a quarter of a percent. NASDAQ off about 0.45%. And the VIX still hanging out right around 13 and three quarters. So not a heck of a lot of evolution during the show. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until next Thursday for you? Well, uh, Mark, I think maybe you should have bet on uh, what will what will the verdict do to the stock price for DJT? Because uh, that, that might also be kind of like an, an interesting place. I don't know if... It's, I mean, it's, you know, it's a 200 vol name or 100, 130 vol name right now. It's actually kind of yeah. flat today, but it's this $51 stock. Uh, you know, what, it does, it doesn't I actually, think it might go up. Whether there's a, whether, whether he's guilty or innocent. I, I, you know, I don't know. I, my, if he's, I, I, yeah, I think, I think it, it goes up maybe either way. Kind of, it, it's an interesting, Just, if he's guilty, does that like, I, you know, I don't know the ramifications. I got to, you just blew my mind, Henry Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, I'll be watching DJT. I'll tell you, I, I rode my, I rode a city bike right past the courthouse this morning and there's maybe 80 TV trucks and everybody's set up to do their live shots and they're all just kind of waiting around. Um, I will be watching these, the economics that are coming out, uh, you know, tomorrow. Uh, there's a few earnings coming up. I think we might have GameStop earnings next week. Um, and just, you know, kind of looking at the macro picture, um, you know, like I said, I, I kind of expect us to just kind of be kind of choppy. Um, you know, it, it, to me, this is we're in kind of a healthy zone. Like, you know, vol is, vol is not as cheap as it was. So you can kind of play it, you know, from either side and pick your spots. It's not just, you know, trudging along, you know, down around 12 where there's, you just feel like you don't quite know what to do. So, um, and that's uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'll keep on my eyes on. Unfortunately, that music means we have no more eyes on this show, listeners. But don't worry. If you want more in your life, stay tuned. If you're hanging out in the live and in the pro, I'll be back in a little bit with the uncle list of mics. Can never have too much Uncle Mike in your life. Uh, in the meantime, though, if you listen to this now and you're saying, man, where can I go to get more Uncle Mike right now? Mr. Uncle Mike, where can they go? What can they do? Well, a couple things on Tuesday night. I will be having a webinar on 6040 versus hedged equity. Is it dead? We'll be talking about that in my webinar. So tune into my social media. I'll be putting out a link for that at Mike Tussaw on Twitter. Follow me on LinkedIn as well. If you're looking for a financial advisor and you want to have a conversation with me, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com and set up an appointment with me. It's too late. We've already declared it dead on the advisor's option. There is no more to be said on the matter, sir. We have put the final nail. In the oh, but wait. Oh, you are incorrect, sir. There is plenty more to say. <laughs> Tune in Tuesday night. 
Tune in Tuesday night. Indeed, listeners. And Mr. Meatball, where should they tune in if they want to see who wins your wager with the Rock Lobster? Tell you what, listeners, I will just tell you where they <laughs> could go. <laughs> he could have option fit. Yeah, sorry about that. There you go. We, uh, we are in the last few days of our Option Pit University launch. Um, you know, you can find all about it uh, by uh, just uh, following me on Twitter at Option Pit and uh, come read my uh, my Vix Edge blog that I put out uh, just about every day. It's worth your time. There you go. OptionPit.com, the place to go. And last but not least, Mr. Flowmaster, sir. Where should folks go if they want to check out all this flow we're talking about throughout the entire show, sir? Zebo.com slash RMA, which stands for Risk and Market Analytics. Uh, you can see all the platforms and data that services we have there, and we are happy to set people up with trials and show them the magic. Show them the magic. I like that. That should be the new tagline. Sebo. Show them the magic. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make that their new tagline. I can get behind that. If you want to see the magic for yourselves, listeners, uh, you can't go to Sebo.com slash see the magic, at least not yet. I'm going to see if I can make that happen for you. In the meantime, go to Sebo.com slash RMA for risk and market analytics. That is going to do it for us on the option block. Hang out in the live if you are. If you want to join the folks in the live and hang out in the pro, you want to get options oddities after vol views tomorrow. You want to get pro Q&As. You want to get early access to all sorts of cool stuff like the stuff that's been hitting for a while there on the pro from OIC just starting to trickle out to the network now and of course you want to get your name in the hat for the May pro trading crate just about a day away or so the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go back again in a little bit with the list of mics for a whole bunch of this week in futures options back again tomorrow noon central 1 p.m. Eastern for volatility views who will join us got to tune in to find out and then after that, exclusively for our pro friends, one final time for the week with a little bit of options oddities before we come back again on Monday, another episode of the Option Block. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>